Hey everybody, I'm Justin and I am thrilled to be here to be uh, making an instructional video for this amazing solo version of Jacob Collier's song, Little Blue, from the Mahogany Sessions video that he posted on YouTube a little over a month ago. Now, this song is gonna be on his upcoming Jesse Volume 4 album coming out in February of 2024. Um, but I think it's really special that he did this acoustic video um, because uh, hearing this song with its bare bones of just the voicings on the guitar is really revealing, it's really special, really intimate, and I absolutely love it. Now, I've been following Jacob for a little over a year and I've gone on a deep dive with his music and theory and there's so much to learn. However, I'm particularly excited about his acoustic guitar versions of his songs. I love how bare and exposed the idiosyncrasies are and the voice leading, and it actually makes learning them more accessible than, say, the studio albums. Now, the album versions have so many layers, it's kind of hard to uncover exactly what's going on. But with acoustic guitar, it's all exposed with only a handful of notes at a time. Now this has always been my favorite way to play and hear music, so um, we're gonna dig in. My goal for you in this lesson is to not only teach you the song, but also how the chords are built in Jacob's favorite tuning, which I'm gonna demonstrate before we get started. Now, this is gonna inform how this song is put together, how the chords are built, how many of them are built exactly the same in terms of the, the left hand fingering that we're gonna be using. Now, it's gonna get you familiar with chord shapes for other, say, acoustic versions of, of Jacob's songs if you go down that road, because he uses this tuning a lot. And the more acoustic versions of his songs that he releases, the more similarities we might be able to take from what we learn in this song and apply it to other songs. Now, my inspiration to learn this song in the first place was um, I love playing in altered tunings, hearing him do that and hearing all the kind of signature surprise chords that Jacob knows how and when to put into uh, his material is kind of something that I want to take even beyond just learning the song. So we're gonna dig into some of that as well. This lesson got longer than I initially intended. However, the deeper I got into it, the more I wanted to make sure that you understood not just how to play the song, but how the chords are shaped, how they are structured, and how we can move these shapes around the neck to give a really thorough examination of what Jacob is doing. There will be multiple camera angles to show you fingerings up close, as well as chord diagrams that will appear up here on the screen to help you visualize what's going on. So I hope you'll stick with me to the end, and by the end, I promise you, you're gonna know how to play this song. Let's get started. Now, many of us heard this song for the first time and were completely blown away. I started to look into it, discovered what his open tuning was, and I'm watching, I'm going, the fingers, there's something not right about this. The camera zooms in and I realize he's only got five strings on his guitar, a custom five string. Now he's not just taking a string off, um, custom five string guitar. Now. I'm assuming none of you have a five string guitar, but we can work around this and I'm gonna show you how. Let's look at the tuning itself. So the tuning uh, he's using is from low to high. <laughs> now it's gonna be a little different because we have six strings, but the basic is D on the sixth string, A on the fifth string, E on the fourth string. Uh, he Basically, you can think of his guitar as like not having the third string or the G string. So what I've done is left my third string tuned to a G, but I'm avoiding it um, in all of these voicings. The next top two strings, which he uses primarily as drone strings, is an A on the second string, and the first string is tuned to D. So to get to that tuning, we're going to take our first string and drop it a whole step down to D. The second string, B, is going to drop a whole step down to A. We'll leave the third string, G, as it is, even though we're not going to play it. The next one is the fourth string, your D, is going to go up a whole step to E. Now, I've been going in and out of this tuning uh, for the last couple weeks and haven't had any problem, but just before starting this video, I was just checking my tuning and I happened to break that string. 
Um, so it is tight for the guitar, um, but you're not going to cause damage to it just with this one song. Um, but if you're going to have a guitar that's going to live in this tuning, I would recommend getting a slightly lighter gauge string. Um, so the fifth string is going to stay at A, and our sixth string, our low E, will go down a whole step to D. Now the song on the video, uh, he's actually in this tuning, capoed on the first fret. For the sake of example, I'm going to go without the capo so that when we call out fret numbers that we're on, we're just referencing it of how we see it on the guitar. It's also a little lower. My voice doesn't go quite as high as Jacob's. So that is going to be something that you are going to be able to choose that's going to be best suited for your voice. Now an alternative to this tuning, especially if your voice can't hit those high notes and if you don't want to drop the octave down for when he sings real high, the equivalent tuning for this in a lower tuning so that it's more suited for your voice is everything would be a whole step. You could go a half step or a whole step lower. Your tuning from low to high would be C, G, D. Your D would stay the same. Your G would drop a whole step to F. Your B would drop two steps to G. Now, you're gonna find that uh, that looser tension is that string is gonna get pretty wobbly, but most of the voicings, we don't even fret those top two strings, except in the pre-chorus. Um, but being used as drones, it might work just fine. And your first string would drop two whole steps down to C as well. If you use light gauge strings, that's where you're gonna notice that things are a uh, little, they get a little, little looser. They don't hold pitch as well when you fret them because the less tension on the string, the more sensitive they are to pressure. So this is just to give you an alternative. If you're like, I wanna sing it and I wanna sing the high part, but it's still too high. Taking a capo off the first fret is only gonna give you a half step. That way you can do the alternative. So now that we're in this tuning, the thing that we're gonna to have to remember with all these chord shapes is we're basically gonna be muting the third string or the G string, because we're not gonna use it. Technically, that open G string would work over some of the chords without adding an additional extension, but we're gonna skip it all together just to keep it sounding just like what Jacob plays. So in general, in this alter tuning, Jacob uses the top two strings, the first and second strings, primarily as drones. They add extensions to the chords, but most of his voice leading is all done with the chord shapes that he's building on the lowest three strings. That is where 95% of the motion happens in what he's playing. Now he's doing you know, a finger picking, I wouldn't even say a pattern because it's not the same all the way through. And we're not gonna get into exactly what notes he's playing on the finger picking. We're gonna explore all the chords because we're all at kind of a different level in terms of what your technical or right hand ability is. So I wanna get the chords under your fingers and get you understanding how the chords are built with your left hand. And then you can kind of adapt the finger style or the finger picking part as is suited to your level. Now this song is in 4-4 time, but as you probably noticed in the video, he's very free about his sense of time. It's very, you could call it rubato, you could call it free time. So on the charts on my Patreon page, I have the timing indicated based on how long he sits on the chords. You know, in a foot in 4-4 time, sometimes he's two beats or three beats on the first chord, one beat on the last chord and such like that. So you'll you'll be it'll make sense when you see the the progression. Okay, so let's get into what are the chords that he uses. Now, the great thing about altered tunings is that we know that when we learn chords in standard tuning, every new chord has a different fingering. In this altered tuning, again, I mentioned that we're going to be building all the chords on the lowest 3 strings. We have, there's over 30 voicings of chords in this song. Don't let that scare you. Because there's seven primary shapes that are simply used in different places on the neck. And so we're gonna break it down to the most basic. Let's, we're gonna, we're gonna look at the major chords, the minor chords, and the diminished. And then some of those have inversions um, of them, and we're gonna, those are kind of on case-by-case -case basis because he does them sometimes. So I want you to understand this tuning, first of all, the difference between a major and a minor chord, and once we know that, then if we have a new chord or surprise chord, kind of like in that second pre-chorus when he modulates and it gets all crazy and gorgeous, 
the chord shapes are going to be the same. They're just going to be landing in different places. So although they are new chords to the song, the shape or your left hand is already going to know the shape, which is what is so great about alter tunings. Now, if we were learning this song on piano, it would be even more challenging because if you're familiar with piano at all, you know that to build a chord, uh, the difference between, let's say, a C chord, all white keys, how we'd play it, and then if you were to play a B flat chord, you're going to have some white keys, some black keys. So the shapes are going to change, but on guitar, in alter tunings, the shapes will stay the same, just where we place them is going to be the biggest difference. Now, as you see the, the chord shapes that I'm going to make, um, I notice that Jacob primarily uses his first three fingers, index, middle, and ring. I tend to use index, ring, and pinky. So there's not a right or wrong here. I think there's an economy of motion. I think there's something easier about the way some of these chords are built and how we move them to use index, ring, and pinky. Um, but I'll leave that up to you. You can kind of see what feels most natural to you. Okay, so let's start with the major chords. So I mentioned the song is capoed on the first fret. We're going to do it without the capo. So with the capo, the song would be in D sharp or E flat, but I'm going to demonstrate the chords as if we're in the key of D here with no capo. It's just going to be easier to get those chords under your fingers, and then you can use the capo to put it in whatever key works for you. We're going to get to all the different variations in the intro and all that stuff, but I just want to break down the three types of chords that we're primarily using on this song so that when we start to learn them in context of the song itself, we, our left hand knows the shapes. So the first major shape is the one chord, or in this case, D. Let's just for now look at the lowest three strings. It's open, open, second fret. When we go to the G or the four chord, the shape is going to be identical. It's just going to be landing in a different place on the neck. So zero, zero, two, zero meaning no fret. So the four chord, one, two, three, four, up on the fifth fret. Now, if we're going to bar those bottom two strings, five, five, seven, which is very similar to zero, zero, two, two frets up from where the bar is. The A chord, instead of learning a new chord shape, all we're going to do is slide it up two frets. So this is our major chord shape uh, in this song. And it's just to know structurally what's going on. It's our root, our fifth, and our third. In all these chords, our third is going to be happening on that fourth string. So the reason I want you to know that that note on the fourth string there is our third is when we go, how do we make a minor chord? Well, we flat the third. So instead of being two frets up from the rest of our chord, um, our minor third is only going to be a half step up. So now let's take a look at the two primary minor chord shapes that we use, B minor and E minor. Now I'm not gonna call these by with all their extensions because a lot of the extensions that he's playing are a result of the top two droning strings, not a result of uh, any fingering that he has to change in his left hand, except for the sus4, and we'll get to that, which is on the five chord. So our B minor shape, if we said before, a major shape is our third on the fourth string is two frets up from the, our bar. Now we're gonna go down to the only one fret up. So up on the ninth fret is our B minor chord. It's gonna go nine, nine, 10. Now, if we've learned one minor shape, we've learned every one that we need for the whole song. I think he uses a minor shape somewhere between six and eight times on different places of the neck. We only have to learn one shape. So notice the difference over here on the chord chart, what this looks like. The difference between the major chord shape of the five chord and the minor chord shape of the six chord. So now that we've got this minor six, it means we have the shape for the minor two chord or the E minor. It just happens down here on the second fret. Same relationship, two, two, three. 
So before we get to the diminished chord shapes, because those only come around a few times, um, there are inversions on some of these major chords that he uses a lot. What is an inversion? So an inversion is taking the notes of the triad, the root, the third, and the fifth. All of the voicings I just showed you have the, the root in the bass. So they are considered root position. And we said that it's root five, three, instead of a triad. I mean, it's still the triad, but it's in a different order. So now an inversion is where you take a different note of the triad other than the root, and you put that as your lowest note. The one he uses most often is the one chord in first inversion. So which means first inversion is putting the third of the chord in the bass or the lowest note that you play. So what that chord looks like in this tuning is starting on the fourth fret of our sixth string. Four, five, five. Chord diagram right there. So what this is, is putting the third of our D chord in the bass. Do, re, mi. So D in first inversion also known as a slash chord, D slash F sharp. F sharp meaning it's a D chord with an F sharp in the bass. This is the chord he uses to start all the verses. So all that was was D in first inversion to our four chord or our major chord shape built on the fifth fret. Sliding that up to the seventh fret for our five chord. Sliding it up to the ninth fret for our B minor chord. Now he uses the D in first inversion again as a passing chord down to our two minor chord built on the second fret, that same minor shape as we used up on the ninth fret. So now let's take a look at one variation of the five chord. He does a five sus four chord. And this is why I like using the pinky up on that fourth string. We talked about how that fourth fret is where our third lives whether we're on a major chord or a minor chord. So to make a sus four, our third, our major third goes up a half step. So you can either use your pinky to add it on and then release it to your ring finger or just do your pinky and slide down. So after he does the sus four chord and resolves it down, then he does another different variation on the one chord and slides up, lets the low sixth string ring, ninth fret of the fifth string, and tenth fret of the fourth string. So in that verse, we use the major shape in three different spots. We use the minor shape in two different spots. And then we did one inversion of the one chord down here. So let's hear it all in context. A little blue be my shelter. Be my cradle, be my womb. And again, be my bow, be my river, be the stillness of the moon. Now at the end of this second line, he adds a few more chords as a passing chord. Great thing is, we don't have to learn a new shape. He's using shapes we have already learned. So, let's, let me demonstrate it first, then we'll break it down. Be the stillness of the moon. So, he starts off on that B minor, which we've already used, the minor shape, 9, 9, 10. The next chord he's going to slide up two frets and do the same inversion shape that we learned down here, D over F sharp. We're going to do the exact same shape starting on the 11th fret, and in this case it's an A over C sharp, or an A chord, our 5 chord in first inversion. 11, 12, 12. And then we're going to slide up to the 12th fret, which we know is an octave up from our open string, with our same major shape. 12, 12, 14, which is the same as one, zero, zero, two. This left hand has been able to use that same shape in four spots now. So now that we've looked at all the shapes of how that verse is structured, um, a couple things to remember is we mentioned that we're not using the open third string or the G string. So on all these shapes, um, you know, when I talk about barring a chord, I'm not actually barring the whole neck. I'm really just barring the bottom two or three strings. My 
other finger is, is taking care of that fourth string. And by letting this finger come up and not be pressed down all the way, it's essentially acting as a mute on that third string. Because I want my finger to be up to allow the top two strings to drone without covering them. And that's the case for all of these chords. We're letting our index finger kind of rest across that third string. At the same time, kind of avoiding picking it with our right hand. Okay, so now that we've demonstrated what happens in the verse sections, let's back up, just look at the intro so that we understand what's happening there. And then we'll start to go through the song and find where the new chords are to figure out where we start to sprinkle those in. So let's take a look at the intro. He's only using three strings. He's using our fourth string, our second string open, and our first string open. So the, we're not going to get into all the specifics of finger picking, which I mentioned, but in general, in the intro, he's kind of going, if I just call it by this string, it's four, two, four, one. So your thumb on the fourth string. That's the basic idea. One and two and one and two and. So let's take a listen to that intro. I'll just call out what fret I'm on on the fourth string. And the other two notes that are playing are just the open two droning strings. So this is fifth fret. Third, second. Third, fifth, seventh, fifth, third, second. So that's the part of the intro. Now, just before the verse starts, he adds this uh, inversion of our four chord, which we've done our major shape up here. So it's a major chord, but it's inversion. Instead of having the root in the bass, he's going to have the third in the bass. And it's super convenient where it is. So at the end of that intro melody, it sounds like this. And he adds the low bass note. And then resolves it to that one major chord, the D. Then we go into the verse. Little blue, which we demonstrated before. So now we've got a, gone through the intro, through that first verse. Now, as you know, on the video, he adds some fills in different places. Now, the chart that I've got is going to demonstrate what those fills are, not necessarily down to the exact timing because he's playing again in very free time, but just to show you where things are and how you can play them and what fingers to use. So let's take a look at, at those fills. Again, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because again, we're all at different levels and, and being able to play these fills and the licks note for note are, I think are less crucial for, for most of us to be able to get started playing this song, understanding how it's built and adding the fills as you see fit or as you are able um, can be up to you. So let's take a look at that first basic fill. If I could. So that's, this is why I like using my pinky up on the fourth string. It frees up these other two fingers to do some of these things. So he's just hammering on with his middle finger up on the seventh fret of the fifth string. He's plucking it first, hammer on, and then pull off. From there, I go with you to a place I never knew. And here comes a nut, the next fill. Just again, not note for note, but starting on this one chord, our major shape that we started with the song with. And with our fingers on the second fret of the fourth string, it goes two, three, two, open, two, three. Then he hammers on the second fret of the fifth string and resolves it back. So that's what it sounds like. So I really only picked the first note. I'm so it requires a little bit of strength in the left hand, which is why the fills are optional depending on where you're at. So he comes out of that and goes back into the verse. In your eyes, so dark and old, there's a light that leads me back to you. 
Here he doesn't, he doesn't uh, come off of that five chord, he stays on the five chord. And from here, he goes into the first pre-chorus. All right, so in this pre-chorus, we've got a series of chords, which our ear starts to notice that there are a couple chords that are outside of the key, chords that we haven't heard yet. The great thing is there are no new chord shapes. They're the same shapes that we've already learned, just used in different places on the neck, except for the fact that Jacob uses his pinky to add some additional higher extensions to the chords. So what I'm gonna do is just show you the basic chords first, how the chords are structured on the lower three strings, just like the way we've done all these other chords. And then I'll come back and do it a second time to show what he's doing with his pinky. That way it gives you some flexibility on how you get started with this, depending on if your hands feel like they can reach that because the pinky is kind of a stretch. But this way you'll have the chords that you need to play the pre-chorus, whether you can add that pinky extension in or not. As soon as we can't technically do something, it can derail the whole process of learning a song. So I want to give you two options here. So our first chord is one that we've already done, our B minor up on the ninth fret, nine, nine, 10. Now I'm gonna use my middle finger on the 10th fret because I know what, when I go and add the pinky, I'm gonna need that stretch, I'm gonna need that flexibility so I don't wanna be all crammed up here. So the first chord sounds like this. Cause you're not so, and this shape for the next word, for so far away, is another minor shape just down on the fourth fret. So this is a new chord. Last time we were on the fourth fret, we were doing D over F sharp, which was one note difference. Now we're down four, four, five. And from there we go um, up to the G chord, our major chord shape built on the fourth fret. Cause you're not so far away. This one's gonna start to feel a little tricky. This is the D over F sharp. It looks a lot like the F sharp minor we were just doing, but it's actually covering four, five, five. And I'm barring it with my middle finger for those two. And I wanna make sure I'm not barring the G string because we're not gonna want that later. Because when we add the pinky, we're gonna want that reach. Another alternative to this is to use all three of these fingers, index, middle, ring if you feel like you can reach your pinky up there for the next version. After that D over F sharp, we're gonna hear another new chord to our ears, but not a new chord to our left hand. It's another minor shape up on the seventh fret for A minor. And it's gonna sound like this. Seven, seven, eight. After that, we go to a G over B, which is our major chord in first inversion shape just like we used to do down here on the fourth fret. This is back up on the ninth fret. And you may notice this shape, you know, it looks a lot like our B minor. Our B minor was nine, nine, 10. This is nine, 10, 10. So on this chord, it's you'll never walk alone. Our major chord shape again on the 10th fret, 10, 10, 12, alone. Slide that major shape two frets up to the 12th fret for our D chord. And then he does an OO section afterwards. OO, back on the 10th fret. OO, back to that G over B on the 9th fret, 9, 10, 10. So let's hear it all together. Cause you're not so far away. I hear you say, you'll never walk alone. holds there for a second before going into the chorus. Okay, so now let's look at the way that he plays it on the Mahogany Sessions, where he's adding the pinky with the higher voicings. Now they don't get as much weight in the, in the way that he strums. He's still building the chords on these lower strings, but they're kind of like an extra highlight instead of the drones that we've gotten used to hearing of those two. So he's not hitting any of those open anymore. Okay, so let's look at the first chord. Now the B minor, he doesn't actually add his, his fingers on the higher strings at least from what you can hear and see on the video. So that one can be just like we did before. Cause you're not so far. When we go to that F sharp minor, we're gonna go four, four, five on the lower strings, 
muting that G string by this finger just resting across it, and the pinky on the seventh fret across the first and second string. So far away. So on that chord, we're sliding back to our major shape, five, five, seven. I'm using my ring finger on that. Um, just because it gets a little bit of this is the probably the hardest chord to physically play in the whole song because it's the biggest stretch so it's five five seven kind of muting that g string again and then our pinky on the ninth fret barring those two together now the next one let's give a little relief to our hand is we're going to slide back down to the fourth fret to our d over f sharp or our major chord in first inversion shape Four, five, five. This is where you can make a choice. If you, you can try it both ways, you can stack your fingers and then put your pinky on the seventh fret. Or you can try same frets, but using just your middle finger to bar the fifth fret of the fourth and fifth string. Whatever feels more comfortable. And I guarantee you, none of these feel super comfortable. All right, so the next chord on I, I hear you say he slides up to the seventh fret our minor chord shape seven seven eight and our pinky across first strings on the tenth fret and those are the only chords that use the pinky there's four chords right in a row that use it after that to end out that pre-chorus you'll never walk alone that's just on those lower three strings so let's hear it all together. Cause you're not so far away I hear you say You'll never walk alone Singing Alright, so the chorus. Good thing to know is that it's all the same shapes we've used already. And they're even going to land in the same place as they did in the verse, just in a different order. So we start with this D. Don't be afraid of the dark E minor in your heart. He starts on the A sus. So 7, 7, 10. And then resolves it down to be 7, 7, 9. You're gonna find a way. That's the E minor on the second, starting on the second fret with our minor shape. The D over F sharp, starting on the fourth fret. Our G on the fifth fret. All right, so the next line gonna be very similar. He's gonna have one little fill that we're gonna add. To carry the weight of the E minor, G, A sus, and when he's on that A sus, he does a hammer on, kind of like we did in the first verse, with his ring finger up on the ninth fret of the fifth string. And pulls it off again. And when he pulls it off, he resolves the sus down to the major third. So it's going to sound like this. And this last little part is going to have one little change. It's going to do, we're going to do a different inversion of the one chord when we get to it on beat four. It sounds like this. You're going to find your way home. So this is like where we did our sus four before and we hammered on on that ninth fret with our ring finger. This is actually our one chord in second inversion. First inversion of chords puts the third in the bass and second inversion puts the fifth in the bass. So um, we had we had that version in the uh, earlier on in the song where we had the low string and he was holding the ninth and tenth fret of the fifth and fourth string. Now if we put our finger on the seventh fret, one, two, three, four, five, that's the fifth of above D. It's a one chord, but the lowest note we hear is the fifth of the chord. So. You're gonna find your way home. And he hits that before going to the little instrumental fill. Mm -hmm. 
So let's take a look at that. So this little instrumental fill starts on this one chord, although he hammers on to that second fret, so. And then he's gonna hammer on up to the third fret on the fourth string and hammer on the second fret of the fifth string. We had this voicing a little earlier as well. And then to finish it off, he slides up to the fifth fret on the fourth string, back to the third fret, and he does a big kind of retard here, and then walks up second fret of the fifth string, and then finishes it off doing a one chord, a slightly different variation of what we did before. Just to continue with this voice leading of this note going up, he's playing open, fifth fret, fifth fret, open on the second string, and open on the high string. Again, kind of not playing that G string. So that tag sounds like this. So, good news about this next verse, it's 95% the same as the first one. There are a couple different fills, which again, you, depending on your level, you can do them or simplify them or just hold a chord throughout them if you don't want to actually add them in. Um, and when we get a little further into this verse, there is a, a new surprise chord, which is again, signature Jacob move to surprise our ears with something that we haven't heard yet. So let's just take a look at it. I'll play it through. Little blue, be my anchor, be my light, my compass star. So let's take a look at that fill. Rhythmically, we've got some room to breathe on this, um, but he's doing another lick using that second, third, second open and here he does a slide though with the second fret on the fifth string third fret of the fourth string just sliding it up two frets and back down so more or less sounding like and he does when he lands back on that one chord it's kind of like he retards into it as a fermata or where he holds before he goes back into the next line of the verse, which goes like this. Be my darkness, be my danger, be the strings of my guitar. So we had D over F sharp to the G or a four chord to the F a or the five chord to the B minor up on the ninth fret. And then he adds in a little extra passing chord, does the E minor to the D over F sharp to the strings of my, the five sus. Pauses there, another fermata. So what I hear when he plays this fill, and if you watch the video closely, I think they did multiple takes of this. It looks like he starts playing something up here, but you don't hear it. So I'm thinking it's footage from a different take. Um, and it almost sounds like he misses one note. Sorry, Jacob, I'm not trying to call you on it, but what I see him doing on his hands and what I'm hearing are slightly different. So. So those are the notes. Again, those notes are on the chart on, on Patreon. All together, it sounds like this. So this last line of the verse, all the same shapes that we've used, except a diminished one at, at the end, which we'll get there in a sec. He what he does to vary things though, is he starts to change how many beats he sits on some of these chords and sometimes adds in a new passing chord, a chord that we've used, but uses it as a passing chord. So this one has just slight rhythmic variation, right or wrong of how you do it. It's all the, using all the chords is always an option. Having to skip one, if it's too many in sequentially, that's fine as well. 
But this one sounds like this, and I'll slow it down a little bit. Little blue, how I love you. Something strong and something true. So here's our first new chord, our first diminished chord. So this new chord is an A sharp diminished. Now, great thing is that it's only one fret difference from the chord that we were just on. So we had ended on something on the five chord, seven, seven, nine. All we have to do is put our middle finger on the eighth fret of the sixth string. So it goes eight, seven, nine. There's the chart. Something true. And then he resolves it to that D and second inversion, which a chord we just learned, where it's seven, nine, 10. Strange and something true. So the next line, we have our second diminished chord. It's gonna start off like the other ones. In your arms, so dear and gentle. And here we go, down to the first fret. It's gonna go one, three, two. And on this chord, he's not hitting the, the droning strings. So let's hear it in context. In your arms, so dear and gentle. And he kind of picks it one, two, three. There's a light, back to the E minor, that brings me back to that five sus to you. Resolved. And now we're set up for the second mind-blowing pre-chorus. But get this, there's no new chord shapes. They're just happening in different places. And we get a modulation. Two, depending on how you look at it. Let's take a closer look. Okay, the magical second pre-chorus. Do a quick review of the chords. Um, we are we have some modulations here, so same chords in different places. And there's slightly different variations on the way that he uses his pinky. So let's just hear the basic chords first, just on the lower three strings. We start with the B minor, top on the ninth fret, nine, nine, 10. Cause you're not so, to the F sharp minor on the fourth fret, minor shape, four, four, five. Far away. This is a new chord, but not a new shape. We're just sliding up to the sixth fret, doing our minor shape, six, six, seven. Away, I hear. This is our major chord in first inversion shape, starting on the first fret. One, two, two. Say we're going to a major shape here. However, he adds a little hammer on. So this is our major shape starting on the second fret, two, two, four. But we're gonna start with two, 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 just a bar with our index finger. Hammering on to the fourth fret if you can do so. The next line, we're going to a minor shape to a new place that we haven't been before on the eighth fret. Eight, eight, nine. You'll never walk. This is our major chord shape in first inversion on the 10th fret, 10, 11, 11. Another familiar shape, just a new place. You'll never walk alone. Our major shape, now we're on the 11th fret. So 11, 11, 13. Alone. Now going up to the 13th fret, 13, 13, 15. So if you notice, last time we went C to D, now we're D flat to E flat. So we've modulated up. This is the second part of the, depending on how you look at these modulations. When we ended up on the E, we modulated from D to E, up a whole step. When we get to this passage, the B flat, the A over C sharp, 
to the D flat to the E flat. It's like we're in A flat. So we've kind of modulated twice, which this sets him up for a tritone modulation from A flat back to D. In order to get there, we've got the last two chords of this pre-chorus. So the way that we get there is we're going to go to another major shape on the eighth fret. So eight, eight, ten. And it kind of does a little finger picking pattern here. Again, this we're not going for exact same pattern um, across the board, but just the general idea. This kind of helps with the transition. Um, so strings six, five, four, five, four. Then the next chord is our next diminished chord. And it's a shape we've used before. We used it in the last verse. But this one's going to be on the fifth fret. It's going to go five, seven, six, which is the same shape we used when we were down here in the last verse. But so those last two chords together go like this. So those are our basic chords. Now let's add the, the pinky. So starting on the B minor, cause you're not. I hear on the recording the 12th fret of the second string, not so much on the high string, whether or not you just bar it because it's familiar, you can do that. But um, here is where I think instead of strumming, he might be just picking thumb, thumb, index, ring. Cause you're not so far away. So we slid that whole shape up from F sharp up to G sharp. I hear. Now this one is again kind of I think a grab with the fingers as opposed to a strum because he's playing this B over D sharp which is our major chord in first inversion. But I hear that the first fret of the high E string I can hear that in the chord. So I'm kind of grabbing the strings um, to avoid the second string and the third string. Hear you say, no high strings there. You'll never walk alone. No high strings over those last chords. And now we're set up for the final chorus. So there's no new chord shapes here, um, all ones that we've used before. Um, there's only some subtle timing changes, the way how quickly he changes from one chord to the next um, and at inserting passing chords like he's done. Uh, it's not always the same, but it's one of those things is kind of like what makes it so signature. There's so many voicings, so much great voice leading, not just your standard, you know, three, four chord song that stays on one chord until it's ready you know, for however many bars until the next one. He's inserting all these things to create so much interesting motion. So that's why we love him, right? So let's just, I'll just play through it. Singing, don't be afraid of the dark in your heart. You're going to find a way to carry the way. your shoulders you're gonna find your way so there he's inserting that first chord of the one chord and second inversion as we continue on don't be afraid of the light it's all right you're gonna find your shoulders you're gonna find your way home instead of resolving he's on the five just for that beat four of that bar before going into the final outro Now that part of course goes on into the choral part where he's conducting them and continues to sing over it.
But as far as the main part of the song, that's where we're gonna end this. So I wanna extend a huge thank you to you for sticking with me this entire time. If you've got any thoughts or ideas of other lessons you'd like to see, please comment below. And in the meantime, click the bell uh, to be notified when new videos are posted and like and subscribe as you see fit. And I look forward to building this channel with lots of new lessons. Thank you.